15 tackles in the game, and Scotland win at Twickenham. Twickenham wrapped in tartan again. And England's new era, the Borthwick era, ends in defeat. And another rip snorter of a Calcutta Cup to add to the lengthy list. Tight as you like throughout. And then brilliance at the end from Duan van der Merwe to make sure that it'll be a very thoughtful 24 hours, 48 hours for England's new man, Steve Borthwick. Final score, historically, for Scotland. England 23, Scotland 29. Well, you've got to give it credit to Scotland. They were bold, they were brave, they hung in the contest, and really, they are deserved winners. I thought they were outstanding throughout. They weathered the pressure. That everything that England threw at them, Finn Russell had his moments. They'll, they'll feel very disappointed, England, but Scotland four tries to three. And in Van der Merwe, they had the player, the Guinness player of the match, outstanding with that individual try, wrapped it up with a second try. Scotland's fourth, and wow, amazing performance from Scotland. What a great test match, I have to say. Yeah, I thought it was a magnificent performance from Scotland. Steve Bordwick will obviously be disappointed. But there was a confidence today about Scotland. Two years ago, Nick, they played in front of an empty stadium. Now, in front of a full stadium, the Scottish supporters will absolutely save this. Calcutta Cup rugby, let me tell you, is one of the most exciting, passionate games you can ever play in. Doddy would have enjoyed that. We all enjoyed that. I think in the end, whatever colours you're sporting, that was a cracking game of rugby. And at the end of it, Scotland are smiling. So much to pick over when we come back from the break. Final score in the Calcutta Cup. England 23, Scotland gloriously 29. Coverage of the Guinness Six Nations on ITV is sponsored by That's the Way Motorway, the site to sell your car. Let you decide, let you go right ahead. Look in my dreams, what you're gonna do next? This is what we do best. Invictus and discover Invictus Victory Elixir, the new fragrance by Paco Rabanne. I wonder, I wonder what you would do if you had the power to dream any dream you wanted to dream. You would, I suppose, start out by fulfilling all your wishes. Love affairs, banquets, wonderful journeys. And after you'd done that for some time, you'd forget that you were dreaming. This is Debbie's nightmare. Losing track of invoices has led to an unexpected visit from her suppliers. But this is merely a figment of her unwoken imagination. With Intuit QuickBooks, Debbie can see her finances in real time, so there's no surprises. Look at us. Our lives are a hive of activity. So why does most health and life insurance just stand there? Doing nothing, unless the worst happens. Oh, this is my kind of speed. Vitality is different. Our insurance doesn't just protect you, it also rewards you when you get active. With everything from weekly coffees to half-price gym membership. Oh, oh. And right now, you'll even get up to two months cash back on your premiums. 
We're the British Gas Money Saving Engineers, here to help protect homes and wallets. Surprise repair bills, screwdrivers to that. Home care covers heating, plumbing, electrics, and more. So if anything goes wrong, we'll be around to put it right. Buy now and get 50% off home care for your first three months. Offer ends 20th of Feb. Search British Gas Boiler Cover. Welcome to Lidl, where you can save on this big shop compared to Morrison's. We're always Lidl on price, so you could save on all these essentials. Fill up on your five a day and bag big brands without breaking the bank. Switch from Morrison's to Lidl and save over £30 on this like-for-like -like big shop. Now that's big on quality and always Lidl on price. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It really is something. With Expedia, you can save when you book your flight, hotel, and car as one customized package. So while barely doing anything, you can book everything because you've got a whole lot of nothing to do and absolutely nowhere to be at all protected. Mm. Coverage of the Guinness Six Nations on ITV is sponsored by That's the Way Motorway. The site to sell your car. A magnificent game here at Twickenham and Scotland have won it 29-23. That's their fourth win in six in the Calcutta Cup. Duan van der Merwe, player of the match with two tries for the ages. So let's hear from him now as Scotland celebrates another memorable day at Twickenham. Here he is with Martin Bayfield. Duhan, many, many congratulations. A brace of tries for yourself and the Calcutta Cup still very firmly in Scottish hands. Yeah, no, obviously we came here yeah, wanting to start the, the campaign off on a high. Uh, went in first off, we knew, we knew we had more in us. Came out second off with a bang and yeah, we managed to get the win over England. So we're obviously buzzing. Phenomenal resilience from Scotland when England put you under the pump. They scored that try so soon after the second half. The importance of coming straight back at them. Yeah, no, 100 percent. You know, they scored quite early. Um, we said we just need to stay in the fight, stay in the fight. We managed to get a few points on the on the board and, and we got some confidence, confidence from that. There were moments when you reacted to England, but England had to react to you because you scored first. I mean, goodness me, for an opening performance, that was that was impressive. Yeah, thank you very much. You know, as a winger, you don't get a lot of opportunities. Uh, so I needed to take that opportunity. And uh, yeah, after I scored my first try, I was I, I was also quite surprised. So yeah, I'll take that one any time of the day. And there was a bit of biff in your tries as well. You weren't just sort of dancing around people. If they're in your way, you were going through them. Yeah, at the end of the day, I always say that's my job, you know. There'll be, there'll be wingers up and down the country in England, up in Scotland, saying, no, please don't make us do that. Only you can do that. This is such a confidence boost for this Scotland team at the start of a, of a campaign. What, what can this lead to? Yeah, and 100 percent, you know, we, we, we spoke about getting, getting our first win, win of the Six Nations. And, and now next week, we just need to, to build, take some confidence from that and, and hopefully get our second win next week. Well, many, many congratulations, a man of the match performance. Congratulations. I think that's a smile that could charge every light bulb in Twickenham, and there's another smile that could do something similar. What, what was the key to Scotland winning what was a fabulous game of rugby? I think you mentioned confidence and, and taking the game to England. For me, it was Scotland's passing away from set-piece and away from rocks. That There was probably two or three metres on the first two passes, and they were playing to numbers. So all the time, they weren't trying to play short channels and build a width but they had to be accurate with the passes and I think for me it was those first two passes away and away from set piece and the speed at which they went which then opened it up and isolated England wider out. Will England feel that's one that got away because when Ellis Genge scored were you thinking that England then were on the front foot they had the momentum? Oh, first of all, it was a great game, Mark, and uh, Scotland I think edged it and they deserved to win so I think England will take a lot out of the game. Now Steve Borthwick has got his first game under his belt. There's so much you can work work on there. Um, but I, I, I'm just a little bit disappointed with the substitutions. You know, if you're going to be chasing a game, you're taking off Sinclair and Genge, and then you're, you're putting on Cole and Vinna Vinna Polo. And I'm just going, hang on, with 20 minutes to go, and the Scotland team to get faster, and we've seen a slow, slow down a bit. But I agree with Ian 100%. This, from the Scotland's point of view, they're passing. 
from all over the field was just so confident. And I think that's what they won the game in the end. But it was a fantastic game. But I'm not down from England's point of view. I think there's so much they can work on. You'd just love to speak to them about the speed of ball, the speed of ball. If they get that going on a consistent basis, they've got a lot to build on. And uh, but let's be honest, the best team won today, definitely. What's your overall assessment of what you've watched? <laughs> I think there was loads of good stuff from England's perspective to build on. I thought Scotland just found a lot of space. I thought they found space. And when they were running in space, as Ian said, it kept that confidence, this idea that, well, this game isn't dead. Even when they were down by you know, a, a full-on score, it was like, well, ilk, it's coming. Let's just carry on doing what we're doing. And as they did, those players, when they, they looked like they had a bit of an inner smile in their face when they were in those yards. You know, making big yards up the touchline. Hog put a ball inside, which could have gone for another you know, pitch-length try, which would have been another sort of crowd... Uh, pleaser, and you're sort of thinking, you know, they, they enjoyed themselves out there and they, they deserve to win. Jamie Ritchie, only the sixth Scotland captain. It's his first game of the Six Nations as captain. Sixth Scotland captain to lift the Calcutta Cup here. And Shereen, it's for you almost the most pleasing thing. We said with about 20 minutes to go, how many of these games have you watched where Scotland haven't won it, but they've played really well? Now today, it's been really tight and they have won it. That's a sort of unquantifiable leap, isn't it, as uh, Jamie Ritchie enjoys this moment. In terms of confidence and what a team can do. Yes, and I think Gregor knows they could have been there last year when they beat England at Murrayfield, and then they went to Cardiff and played very poorly and maybe thought that there was a game there that they just had to turn up and win. It looked a bit like that. They were, they were all over the place. Now I think they've learnt that lesson. One, just the way... Brian van, van der Merza was t talking there, the confidence, but to say feet on the ground, we've got a game that we all have to be part of and we all have to be accurate with so that we can actually put a team under pressure and do it again next week where that pressure comes from the confidence that they're giving each other with the positions they're getting themselves into and the passes they're creating to make the most of where they're putting their players because that's the best shape I've ever seen Scotland play in recent seasons. So when we have a look at the winning try, this is what you're talking about, the length, the distance over which Russell's passing goes. Yes, and, and the, you know, the speed away from the base, I think Ben White played, um, played really well too, but you can see um, already they've isolated England on the outside. It's a three on two, so they get round the back. So here we are, if you're looking at the England line, it has to retreat, one pass. Two passes. Look at this. Five on two. And England couldn't get near them because they'd been over the gain line on one side. And here they were with two big passes again, putting your match winner over. And the all line. created by Russell's yeah. passing, the length yeah, of it. And not being afraid to go out into that space, but also created by the fact that guys are already in that space and they're not afraid to be calling for it. Those last two passes on that try were from, um, I think, Richie Gray and Matt Fagerson. There's two forwards, one a second row, one a back row, waiting for it, knowing that, you know, just give it to me. We're here, we're, 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 as we were talking earlier, we're just forgetting about the number on your back. Finn Russell being able to sort of pull that, the trigger on those passes, get the ball where it needs to be, and players just excited. And here we go, yeah, this is what, what it feels like for well, them. The second pass from Russell was just world class. He makes it look so easy. It was so flat, straight in the hands of Gray. And Gray's little tip bomb was fantastic. So it's not just the backs, it's the whole 1-15 to 15 can play with the ball. And, and it just uh, makes the pitch so big, that's the point, well, isn't you, it? If you go wide, wide, you know, as Lawrence called it, ocean to ocean, if you, 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 they go down that and they quick ball, you go that way. That's how space, space has got, and the communication was fantastic, but the passing of every single one of the Scottish players was just world-class today. And I think looking at defences, you, you tend to put six, seven players in the first 15 metres from set pieces, wherever they are, or from rocks, malls. What Scotland were doing was they weren't putting the players, so they weren't carrying in the short channels. They were passing away, but the defenders still have to be there. So all they were doing was bypassing an English defence that had just reset, but had already had to work backwards and then pass across it. So they were passing to numbers that were sitting, waiting outside that defensive structure that actually had just been left behind. Disappointing day for the England skipper Owen Farrell. Here he is with Martin Bayfield. Oh, and without a doubt, you're going to be disappointed with that, of course you are. But the last time this England team left this field, there were boos echoing around the stadium. There are cheers today. It's not a win, but there are, there are elements of that game, surely, you've got to be very proud of. Yeah, definitely. I think we started 11 days ago. Um, there's, been, there's been massive improvement. It feels like 
over them 11 days and trying to get that out on the field today. I thought we did it in large parts. Um, there was some stuff that we that we need to look at, and obviously um, we need to we need to get better at. But we'll have a look at that tomorrow and the day after. Um, but for now, we'd like to credit the Scotland team on their performance and, and sticking it till the end like they did. And uh, we'll make sure we get better from here. Let's accentuate the positives. What were you happy about? What went well for England today? Again, I, I thought I thought we stuck in the fight very well. Um, even though even though Scotland played till the end and scored that try, then it never felt like we went away. Um, I thought we played some good attacking rugby at times. We, uh, when, when we got quick ball, we sit and played on the front foot. We, we caused them, we caused them some problems. Um, so yeah, as I said, we'll have a good look at it and make sure we build on it. There were some errors that were obvious to see. Is that a, a product of a, a new team coming together, new ideas, some some familiar faces returning after a while out? Um, I don't know. Again, I'm studying. I'm studying now. I've been off. Bit off the field for five minutes. Um, we'll we'll have a good look at it. And the thing that we was we was going to do, regardless of, of the result of this game, is get better. And uh, we'll make sure we get hard to work to do that. Okay, I'll, I'll quit with the analytical questions. I'll ask you more the emotional questions. How did it feel out there? Um, it felt good at times. Obviously, obviously there was there was blips. There was blips, and it felt like. It felt to me like we had we had good control for large parts of that game, and it felt like we had good energy. And uh, we was, as I said, we was in the fight the whole way through. Uh, but obviously, there's going to be plenty to get better at, and that's that's what we'll focus on. Okay, I'll get this microphone out of your nose now. You can go and go and look at the VT in a moment. Thanks, Sam. Cheers, thank you. Well, from England's point of view, a point up at half time, and when Ellis Genge scored, you felt, as I said, they did have a little bit of momentum at that stage. They had a lot of momentum, crikey! They were they were ahead of the game. That they were playing really well, and it was a really good good try. As I said, the line from Don Brandt was absolutely key. But all I'm talking about, everyone, the quick ball. Don Brandt takes a quick line, but look how quick this ball come, comes back. Van Port just picks up, go. A great tip on from Sinclair. Just the speed of the game. Doesn't matter who you're playing against, Scotland, the All Blacks, South Africa. If you play this quickly, you're going to eventually score. And this is a quality try. And just a simple move in, but it's the speed of the, speed of the ball. Where it all goes wrong is, is what I got really annoyed about. Was that he's, we score now. We've got about a couple of minutes, Fowl takes the kick a goal. We drop the restart, and Scotland score from that. You know, so we've, we've just scored. The restart is everything. And you've got to get, you know, you've got one person kicking a goal. The other 14 players have got to be getting themselves totally organised. Switch on, switch on, switch on. There's no point scoring than dropping the restart. There's a complete momentum swing. I said at the time to the guys here going, that's massive. And they scored, they scored from it. So to, to me, you've got to have a couple of people in charge of restarts. So when we're scoring, Someone's kicking the goal. You've got time to get everybody flipping organised, and we you just can't drop that. And I think that's what changed the game, really. Well, you we, noticed the time was 48 minutes. England, you know, didn't threaten again, really, after that. Yeah, I, I just thinking about it then, just with the way that Scotland played, I felt like Finn Russell. They have that structure, but within that structure, there's enough enough looseness for him to just play it be him you can see him he's throwing his long passes he's doing a bit of this and even though he had a few kicks earlier or a few things that didn't go, quite go his way you still feel like he's he's got the field the way he wants it and I feel like at, at times you know England are almost there to find that looseness and when they're in that space that reminded me of the New Zealand semi-final in the World Cup that bit of play quick quick here bang bang we scored what are you going to do about it but it was just for a shorter time and then suddenly as Clive said the kick off and then this happens but if there's the ability to have Burst of that backed up with real stability. Kick off, bang, job done. Defence, cut down, penalty, whatever it is, set piece stuff. That's incredibly dangerous. But I thought Scotland today they just had that little bit of oh, what are they going to do, which really worked in their favour. You know, it was it was different passes, this pass stuff we hadn't seen, we have seen, but it all looked also controlled. So I'm excited for for Scotland, but also with little bits like that for England, shoring up everything else and letting that build. That's an exciting future as well. We talked at half-time just about the good things, and there was a lot of good things in the game for both teams. And one of the things that you hadn't seen before, I don't think, with England was the options we, we, we talked about that were being presented to, pe to players like Marcus Smith, Owen Farrell. So when England scored their tries, actually they could have scored them in two different ways. Yeah. Now, if you've got that in your routine and in your game, then all you're going to do is take it forward because you are putting players into the game and you're causing defences problems. So all those little things are the things I think they'll look at really positively and, and build from.
How thrilled must Gregor Townsend be with that famous win? Here he is with Martin Bayfield. Well, Gregor, you were excited before the game, looking forward to the start of this campaign. What a way to get things going. Yeah, some some result for for us and just to, to do it in the last five, ten minutes are always a, the most emotional games in the, in the coaching box. I don't think the players ever get as emotional as, as we do when you when you hang on to win and you've just scored a, a really good try to go ahead. But oh, it, was, it was a much better a second half from us um, and uh, a brilliant win. What changed in that second half, given that England scored first through that Ellis Gange try? Yeah, well, look, it was a disappointing start to the second half, but the, the message that we, we were given is we, we got up our energy. I think we'd got into a bit of a kick battle and I think both teams were, were feeling each other out at the start of the tournament. We'd shown in, in glimpses that we were capable of of making breaks, going tries, and our effort defensively was there. So it just we just needed more, and we we were capable more. And I think the more we ambitious we got and started moving the ball to edges, um, some of our backs uh, caused damage out there. The resilience to be able to do that, particularly in the first game of a campaign where you'd expect players to be a little bit cagey, that must be very pleasing for you. It is, and I think the. The, the two pleasing aspects from it as well are that we've, we've talked about raising our floor and at a minimum level of performance and that's shown through our effort, um, our togetherness and that was there today. But also our ceiling is, is a lot higher than that. Like, we, we didn't get to play until into, well into the second half. A lot, a lot of that was down to England's tactics and how they dominated possession but most of it was down to us as well. So we'll, we'll be better for today um, and we're going to make sure that next week we put in a better performance the last two or three Six Nations, we've not done that in round two. And when you have game break. Happy Scotsman, wherever you look, and quite right too. Here's another one, pitch side, former Scotland international Jim Hamilton. Jim, obviously thrilled that Scotland have won such a fabulous match. What pleased you most about that Scottish performance? Well, there was so much, wasn't there? I think, firstly, the win. It's not an easy place to come and play. Last time there was no fans in the stadium. It's madness down here obviously with the Scotland fans but for me it was the control the lads in the studio are talking about it aren't they and the attacking ability to just look comfortable with the ball in hand what really impressed me were the subs I spoke pitch side I was worried during the game I thought I looked at the England bench and the British and Irish Lions but I thought Blair King Kinghorn was brilliant when he came on George Horn but the attack was world-class. It's something that Greg has been trying to build for years and years. It's clicked now and again. We've seen the Finn Russell, the overs pass. We saw it today to Hugh Jones. But that joined-up approach, 1-15, to 15, that's a brilliant win for Scotland. But also, Jim, that ability to win a tight match. I was saying to Sir Ian in the studio that too many of these games in the past, tight games where Scotland have played well, they haven't won. So what is the difference with those matches, with what happened today, to go and win a tight game? Well, I remember the amount of games where I've been in the games where we should have, could have, would have won them, and like you, you win into, up to a certain point and then you go and lose it. I think it's the confidence. I think it's the confidence in the, in the skill set, the fact that Finn Russell is, is on form and, and he's happy. Um, and I just think that we've got a group of players now that are comfortable with the ball in hand. Like you saw Hugh Jones, you saw Sione Tupalotta with the ball in hand, with a kick in through and the experience as well, and the strength and depth. And there's always tomorrow, Jim, is it's got to be followed up next week, not like last year, where it was followed up with a really bad performance against Wales. Well, that's been the biggest issue for Scotland, is raising the emotion for one-off games. And I was actually just looking at the celebrations there. There wasn't this wild celebration that, it, that, that like they just won the cup final. Without being horrible to England, We've had their number over the last couple of years. For Scotland, the real turning point for them and the real evolution is backing up that win against Wales next week. Jim, great day for Scotland. Thank you very much indeed. Jim enjoyed saying that, didn't he? Got, the num <laughs> got England's number here. <laughs> Let's have a look at Ben White's try because it was key. You just talked about the restart. England messed up the restart. And then the Ben White more than justified his selection today. Yes, it, I mean, he did exactly what he should. You know, he, he's tracking ball. He kept the, the pace and the tempo up. And he was a threat himself, as um, you know, as the, the 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 try actually proved. Here he is, look, he picks a loose ball up, spins, beats Kerry, and suddenly is is over the line. And that's where you need your nines. I say all the best teams in the world at the moment have got nines which challenge and which move the ball and dictate what happens. And that that was a young man just showing the threat. He is as a nine. I know people might criticise Ben Curry, but you've got that low centre of gravity and you're spinning. 
you're away. That's quite tough to oh, listen, stop. Listen, that, that's rugby. You get a, yeah. You're going to get opportunities. He's a great football player, as Ian said. And he took his opportunity really well. It was a missed tackle, probably. But, you know, he, he deserves it. I just go back to that scrum. I'm saying it just came, <laughs> came from that flipping It's going to annoy you all week, this, oh, isn't it? It should never, ever have happened. It wasn't even a great kick. It wasn't, it wasn't like it was competed for. He just had to catch the ball. And the whole team, should, it was, to me, just a game change from that. That one position, suddenly bang. And that's the, the little bits you've got to get right. And I think this will, you know, I'm trying to be really kind of pragmatic here. This could do England a lot of good, you know, to come here and win that game today. So I think Scotland were a better team just by the way they play, the, the way they go t t touchline to touchline, their passing is fantastic. So England got to look at that, learn it, and start to build their, their game. But it was a fantastic game, so just well done to both sides. I, I think the way they were playing, they were moving the ball around, they were playing quick, they, f they were dangerous. And as a result, when that ball squirted out, you could tell when there was that slight missed tackle, that was it. There was no other England players around because England just hadn't had time to set a defence. And, and I think when you play on the edge like that, those things are going to work in your favour. You know, and White got through, and, but when you looked, it was like, well, where's the next guy? It's like, well, they're being stretched. Guys are looking up saying, they've got numbers here, they've got numbers here. This, and all of a sudden, you know, sure enough, Curry goes, I've got to go for that, but he misses it. And because of that, the, the, the margins of error, because they're stretched, they're huge. And fair play to Scotland playing that quick, clearing up rucks that well chasing the ball and also having the ambition to say why not leaves them those opportunities which which are actually they're earning even though it was a slight error around the ball they've earned that kind of one-on-one -on -one defense and in 10 20 years time people talk about a scotland winning and b duan van der merva's try in the first half in particular so let's have another look at it he 50 it's all the fives he runs from 55 yards and he beats five defenders you could say five missed tackles but it's is your glass half full or half empty Absolutely full. You know, he had an opportunity, confidence, the ability to say, I'm going to take on the next man, two sidesteps to beat two, and a handoff. You know, and that is an attitude. It's a, that's, a, that's a mindset. So you've got to give Gregor credit for what he's put, because sometimes Scotland try to get overexcited and it's England and it's... And so it all becomes chaotic. I, I just felt that there was individual confidence which collectively just just grew. And, and you get something like that and you see the reaction and say, right, let's go again. You know, we can, if we've done it once, we can do it twice. And that's a very different mindset to hanging on in a game. It was a brilliant try, let's make no bones about it, but you have to say they were, they were ready for the ball. I mean, Van, Van, Vorfleet, Van Porfleet's kick was just way, way too far. And if you're gonna kick those box kicks, you've got to get people under so you can compete with it. We just kicked the ball to them and two passes, it's one of the most dangerous runners on the field to play. So again, these are the lessons England got to learn. Say, we're going to play at this level, we're going to play against world-class players, we've got to play a little bit smarter. And we just kicked the ball to them and Hogg takes it, one pass, bang, he's going to be flying. And that's, that's if you're a defensive coach, you're going, guys, why are we doing this? Why are we just aimlessly kicking the ball to these three amazing back three players? And, you know, we got caught, caught again. So, but, you know... In many ways, we wouldn't have seen that great try if we'd not done that, so it was, it was a great piece of skill. Listening to all the previews this week, it almost feels like you need a jar in the middle of a table. You put 10p in it when somebody says, this could be the most open Six Nations of all. I think we've seen why, haven't we? I'm so amazed that it's so hard to get this message across to people. We've, we've played so many of them, I've played so many of them. And each year, no matter what's happened before, you go to Murrayfield or you take Scotland coming here and you sit there in the change room and part of you knows it just doesn't really matter what happened in the autumn, as much as it does if you allow it to mean something. But when guys are just coming out here full of confidence, it doesn't matter. There's so much going on behind the teams, behind Scotland, behind Wales and Ireland, France coming in, Italy, doing whatever they're doing. When those things come alive, it, it's never what you think it's going to be. And you don't prepare for World Cups or autumn or autumn. If you prepare for the Six Nations, you prepare for game one. Good. We, we, we've we've avoided the World right, Cup subject. There. Glory be. <laughs> well, I had two home wins down today, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's how good the Six Nations is. I thought you well, won the World Cup, Sir Clive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> useless out of predicting results. But uh, no, it was, I mean, I've not obviously seen the other game, but great game out here today and just well done to both sides, especially Scotland, because they deserve to win by the way they played the game. Absolutely. And Scotland have got England's number. Well, you're allowed so to say for, it now. For, a, for another year. <laughs> for another year. <laughs> but, uh, Brilliant yeah, but opening Wales weekend. Next week. Wales next week. Wales next week. Got to back it up. Doesn't yeah. mean anything if you don't back it, back it up. It. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. That was absolutely terrific. More live Six Nations tomorrow here. Join Jill Douglas and the team. 2.15 on ITV1. 
and STB as France look to follow up their Grand Slam triumph last year. They kick off against Italy. Next Saturday, what a game it promises to be as the top two ranked sides in the world meet in Dublin, Ireland. After they went over Wales today, they entertain France. And then on Sunday, we're back here at Twickenham, England against Italy. But Italy have had a good last nine months beating Australia and, of course, that famous win in Wales at the end of the last Six Nations. And next Sunday, be sure to join Laura Woods' live coverage of the Super Bowl, the Philadelphia Eagles against the Kansas City Chiefs, 10.45 ITV1 and STV. Here at Twickenham, we've seen a Calcutta Cup classic with Duan at the double. What will the Six Nations bring us tomorrow? Bye-bye. The glorious Six Nations. Another Calcutta Cup cracker. Here we go again. Jones is the favourite. Gets there. It's a score. This is John van der Merwe. Magic goal. Oh! Malins has two. Gage scores for England. Oh, White's gone through. Van der Merwe.